Greetings and salutations, my friends. And welcome again to the uh, garage. So as you can see, carpet. If you're a Mopar purist, you're going to look at this carpet and say, I don't think that's the correct carpet, Rick. And you'd be correct, I think. I'm not really sure. Um, but this carpet I bought on eBay. God. When did I buy this? Years and years and years ago. Probably about the time I started this project, I bought this and I got it on eBay. And um, after I purchased it, I realized that it uh, was for a 66 dart, not a 69 dart. And while the, uh, the, the outside of the cars look totally different, they use the same basic floor pan from the mid 60s all the way into the mid 70s. The, the layout of the floor is virtually the same <clears throat> so it fits and actually I prefer this loop style carpet over the you know the you know shag type or the uh, I don't know what they call it the regular kind but once I got in here and started moving things around I realized I forgot to install some things these little metal dealios here they get they were spot welded in place originally in here and uh, they fold up like that and on that side of the vehicle it's important because that harness runs through that and that's kind of a you know the deal with that and then also it provides a nice gentle slope for that carpet to lay on I can either get my welder out and spot weld these back in, in place and I don't want to do that because I got freshly painted surfaces here and I don't want to melt my carpet. So I'm going to get some panel adhesive I think, some panel bond and glue these in and, and then I'll come through and I'll use the same uh, flashing material sound, slash sound editor and I'll cover that up all the way to the rocker. Uh, what I am going to work on today is I'm going to adjust the torsion and bars so I can lift the front end a little bit. Right now I can't even get my jack under it without lifting up on the front end to get my jack underneath the um, cross member. So I'm going to adjust the torsion bars up so the suspension has some uh, spring into it. And I'll show you how to do that. It's really very simple. And uh, it's a poor man's way of lowering a car. Just loosen the torsion bars. First, let me get my, my broom out here and clean the floor a little bit because it's dirty. I'm going to get dirty. I just don't want to get that dirty. Hold on, bear it back. Okay, I'm back. So, if you're like me, you're not a Mopar guy, you're a Chevy guy, and uh, torsion bar uh, front suspension setups really were kind of foreign to me until, oh, the late 80s early 90s when Chevy started using them on their 4x4 trucks and you can get a couple inches of lift just by tightening down the torsion bars creating a little more spring pressure truck rides like and your alignments off but you get a poor man's lift kit that way you can go I think a couple inches Mopar on the other hand has been using these torsion bar suspensions for years decades I go all the way back into the 40s and 50s and I do remember a good friend of mine in high school, Jim Hankinson, he had a, like a 72 Duster, as most 16 year olds are, they're pretty aggressive drivers, and he would come up, up the street to school in the morning and make the turn, and he'd you know, lay into the corner, and those tires would be squealing, and those bias ply tires, and the front suspension looked like it was gonna collapse. But here, you can see, where the torsion bar goes into the lower control arm and for you Mopar guys I'm not talking to you I'm talking to the guys that don't understand torsion bar suspension but that bar right here if I can even get in here to show you that bar right there has it's keyed into a, a hexagonal hole here and then the other end has a an adjuster. Actually, I think the adjusters on the all the adjusters on the other end. On the Chevys, it's back here. 
you can see on the driver's side the torsion bar goes back here where the rear cross member is ties into the unibody and is keyed into an anchor point there so on here you see that bolt that's dangling down right there that bolt right there you tighten it because the other end is keyed into a hexagon uh, anchor point can't turn and when you turn that it takes this that's attached to this anchor point here right right here that bolt goes into this that's keyed into the lower control arm and then that uh, torsion bar goes into a uh, uh, a torsion bar key that's hooked into the front of this dealio here. Anyway, the long story long, I know I'm, I'm butchering the explanation here. Long story long, you tighten down that bolt, it creates a twisting force on this, creating upward pressure, uh, creating a uh, torsional force on the lower control arm, and that's your suspension. Basically, this is a lateral spring this thing here so originally when I took this car apart I did I violated some key principles first of all is I, I didn't denote which side those torsion bars came off of and the thing is these old torsion it's still these torsion bars are still available new you can get them but if they ain't broke you know why replace them but after 40 years of being twisted one direction if you put it on the other side of the car, now you're twisting in the opposite direction, and they could snap. You got a 50-50 chance of getting in the right spot. So the odds are 50% that you got it right. But right now I'm gonna tighten down those bolts. Right now they're, I think they're pretty much, uh, I think they're pretty much completely loose. Well, they're not completely loose. They have very little tension on them. I'm gonna to torque those down and get the front of this car up so I can actually get my uh, jack under it without having no pop or hernia lifting up on the front to get the jack underneath it. Not only that, but with the, with the uh, car as low as it was, I only had about two and a half inches of ground clearance between the floor and the bottom of the primary tubes of the header. Last thing I need to do is crush my Freaking cheap headman headers on a speed bump. standard two by four. Two by four is three and a half by inch and a half. About a three and a quarter inch ground clearance on the driver's side and about four inches of ground clearance on the passenger side for those headers. And it looks to be about Maybe six inches of clearance at the cross member. I don't know, man. That, little, that header looks like it's gonna get some mashed at some point in its future, but, <laughs> oh well. Now what I'm gonna do is, uh, now that I got this thing jacked up a little bit, hopefully I can get my, yeah, it looks like I can. I can get my, uh, my my drain pan over there, the big old five gallon drain pan on wheels underneath the tail shaft of that uh, transmission. I need to pull the yoke out of the transmission so I can put it back on the drive shaft. Um, so I can put the drive shaft back in this thing. I got a new U joint the other day. I put installed the U joint onto the drive shaft. Now I need to put the yoke onto the drive shaft. Let's go dig around in the parts and see if we can find the drive shaft 
straps that go onto the rear axle. Yeah. I know they're back here someplace. Ah! Is that it? Yep. I think those are it. You know what I think I'm gonna do? I think I'm gonna jack this thing up so I don't have to struggle like a goof. Let's sing up on jack stands. You see the yoke that's in the transmission? I gotta pull that out. And I'm, I jacked the back end up so I can get up in here easier. And as a bonus, maybe that will reduce the amount of spillage. Because as soon as I pull that yoke out of there, I'm gonna start losing training fluid. But it has to come out because I have to put it back on the drive shaft. <laughs> okay, come on, come on, you can do it. <laughs> oh, no spillage! Bonus. Here's the drive shaft and the new U joint. This this is the uh, the uh, rear axle end. These needle bearings feel pretty good. It needs to be greased, obviously, but. And of course, this one's brand new. So, let me put this together. Let me show you something, fellas. I told you I'm hard on the equipment. I finally broke my tripod. After about a year of abuse the plastic finally failed so I'll have to get another one of these uh, Sabrent flexi tripod <coughs> maybe I can repurpose that so I need to get a new tripod where's my old tripod All right, drive shaft's hooked up. That's ready to go. Well, I was down there and noticed that the e-brake cable needs to get hooked up yet. While I'm down there, I might as well hook up the transmission linkage. That way I can shift it from the driver's seat. Back to work. Well, unfortunately, I can't hook up the shifting linkage because I'm missing a piece of the puzzle. So I'm going to have to revisit that after I do a little bit more research. But I did get the drive shaft in, the emergency brake cable is in and adjusted. 
but right now I need to go inside and order some parts. This past weekend, I went into town and uh, went to pick a part again. And yeah, let me show you what I got. Remember this thing? I couldn't get the thing to work. Well, it turns out this thing works just fine. What you can't see underneath that cap is a 30 year old coil. Here's the coil that came with that unit. Garbage. I tested this the other day with an RC battery. Well, let me see if I can do it for you right now. All right, so I have this 5200 milliamp uh, RC battery here. I've got, oh, this one's grounded out to the case. This is plugged into the battery side. Plug that in. Can you hear that? Hold on. That's turning it pretty slow. So I'm going to give this one more shot. See if I can get this thing to work. At least on the, in the short term, because I already have it. It's like cost seven dollars for a coil from the junkyard now I'll try that and see if I can get it running with that so right now the only thing that's holding me up from starting this thing and moving it out is the fuel tank I need to get a new rubber grommet for the fuel tank this piece right here this one's as hard as a rock I don't know it don't seem too bad but I'll probably replace it anyway um, then I can put the, the fuel neck back in. I need to get a fuel. I need to get a uh, gas cap. That's, you know, just to get it to move, I can hook a small fuel cell and a uh, switched ignition wire to the distributor, make it go vroom. Uh, if I want to drive it any distance, I need to put a rad in it. Right now, I need to concentrate on getting the gaskets for the windshield and the rear glass. And again, the uh, the headliner, because headliner goes in before all the glass does. So I'll go and order those parts. I need to get uh, body plug kit. So before I put the, I have the seat chilling out in the trailer. Before I uh, put that seat in, I need to get these body plugs. I had a few of them, but I need to get the rest of them. Whenever the plug kit gets here, and I get the plug kit in, and I can get the the seat belts in. And then I can put the driver's seat in. So if you like this project, come on with that like button and, and share it with your vast social media network. I'd appreciate it if you could do that. Thank you very much. If you want to support this channel, there's a few ways you can do that through the links in the description. Uh, Amazon affiliate links, PayPal or Patreon. Check those out if that's something that you're able to do. And if you can afford to do that, thank you in advance. If you can't, it means we're probably related. If you haven't done so yet, please consider subscribing. And if you do, click that little picture of a bell that's right next to the sub button. That way YouTube will let you know the next time I upload a video. So until next time, if you have fun, stay safe, shoot straight, keep your butter dry. Have yourself a splendid day. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!